Hello friends, my name is Bintu and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I wanna talk about two audiobook services that I use or have used in the past and they're pretty popular. So we're gonna be talking about Audible and Scribd and sort of the similarities, differences between them and what I think they could both be used for because I do think they fulfill uh, different spaces and so it's definitely possible to just have both of them. So a little bit of background on my um, experience with both of these. Audible I've had for about two years that I've been like using it or paying for it. Before that, I think I've, I've used a free trial to get um, two free audiobooks, maybe even like two times at least. But I have, I currently have one of their yearly memberships, the one where you get 12 credits all at once if you pay the yearly price. The reason I chose that is because it gives you the best cost per audiobook. The cost per credit ends up being about $9 per credit. And I think that's a pretty good deal for, for most audiobooks, particularly since that a lot of the books that I get with Audible tend to be on the longer end and they retail for like 40 something dollars. So it's a steal. The membership is worth it if you know that you're going to be getting um, many audiobooks. And then as far as script goes, I have a month long free trial with them they give you a one month free trial and then I also did one month paid because I am that person that always forgets to cancel my free trial before they charge me for the next month and so of course I log in I see it on my credit card statement they charge me so I got another month out of Scribd unintentionally so I've used Scribd for two months and I didn't continue my membership with them and I'll explain why later on in the video all right so let's begin talking about audible and some of the the strengths and and weaknesses of audible audible. So the way that Audible works is that you get these credits and you can use those credits to buy audiobooks. You can also just buy audiobooks in general. So like they each have uh, prices. So sometimes they go on sale if you want to buy them that way. So if you use your credit, for example, for the month or if you've used all of your credits for the year, um, you can buy audiobooks at a slightly discounted price as a member or you can just buy them in general from their catalog. The price that you pay for credit will vary depending on your membership. Uh, I think the most popular membership is the one credit per month where it's it's about $15 and they eventually add tax to that, so it's a little bit more than that. That is also probably the most expensive cost per credit option. So I like to go for the yearly membership. If you're going to do one per month and you know you're gonna stick to it for a whole year, it's worth it to just get the yearly because you pay you do have to pay for it all upfront, but it is a better value. And then the the, the best cost for credit is the one where you get 24 per year. If you're doing the 12 per year, which is what I'm doing, it actually is the same value as a 24 per year in your first year. Um, and then after that, it is a uh, worse value. Um, I haven't decided what I'm gonna do. Mine won't expire until February, so I've got a couple months to decide how I want to continue with Audible. Um, with Audible, you get access to a ton of audiobooks, including new releases. Um, even books that haven't been released yet, I can pre-order them in Audible, and then it'll be automatically delivered to my Audible account on the day of release, so I can just pull up the app on my phone and it'll be there. Audible probably has the greatest library of audiobooks of any audiobook service out there. Um, um, I can't claim to have tried them all, but I'm pretty sure Audible wins the cake. As far as listening to Audible audiobooks, I can listen to them on my phone, which is usually my go-to. Um, if you have a tablet, you can listen to it there. You can now listen on the Audible website. That didn't used to be the case, but it is available now. There's like a player that will open up. And then also if you own a Kindle, so like for example, I've got my Kindle Oasis, it will play audiobooks. And I have a whole video on audiobooks on the Kindle devices. Another recent addition that makes it even more valuable, their membership, is the Audible Plus catalog. So they've added a whole catalog of audiobooks that come free if you have an audio or an audible membership. I haven't, I've checked out some of the books on there and I haven't listened to any of them yet, but there's a decent catalog there that it's pretty much an added value. I consider it an added value that they've done that. Uh, the books on there look pretty interesting. There are a few Agatha Christie books that I found on there that I downloaded. There was a James Baldwin book that I found on there that I also downloaded and I haven't gotten around to listening to them yet, but I think that's pretty fantastic that they come entirely for free in addition to um, 
your membership. I don't know if there's a max that you can download at once because I haven't quite reached that max. I think currently I've downloaded five of them. So that might be something to look into. They also have Audible Originals. Um, I must admit, I haven't really been inclined to try out any of the originals. None of them really fascinated me all that much, uh, but they're there if you are interested um, or if you really run out of things to listen to and you just want more free things to listen to, they do have the Audible Originals. Um, a couple of the strengths of Audible is that you do own the audiobook that you buy or purchase with credits um, and you own it for life basically. So even if you cancel your Audible membership, if you log in, those audiobooks will be there for you to re-listen to as much as you like. Um, I think that's fantastic. The downside I suppose is that unlike with books, the thing about the tech stuff, the eBooks and audiobooks, is you can't really resell it. So um, I know I for one don't really reread or re-listen to books that often if ever. So for me being able to keep it permanently doesn't really provide additional value. Um, if I wanted to let people borrow it, I would have to give them my Audible login. So you know, maybe my most trusted Friends and family can get that, but for the most part, it's not useful. Audible also does have a pretty generous return policy with their audiobooks, uh, which is nice to keep in the back of your mind if you feel um, hesitant to try it or to try some of their audiobooks. They give you a whole year to decide whether you want to return an audiobook, and it's pretty easy to do on their website. So if you decide to try something that was horrible, you want your credit back, you can get it back very easily. Now, for the most part, and I mentioned this before, my go-to for audiobooks is Libby and I can get audiobooks from my library through Libby. What I tend to use Audible for is books that my library does not have audiobooks for. Um, Audible usually will. And this is usually obscure um, or very specific kinds of non-fiction books. Either that or books that the wait time is like 24 weeks and I just don't want to wait that long to read the book. I will also use an Audible credit for that. And then finally, if there's like a, a new release that I'm really dying to read, um, this only happens a couple times a year. So for example, Transcending Kingdom and um, Rhythm of War are two books that I will use Audible credits for because I know that in order to wait to get that for free through my library, it's just going to be insane and it's not gonna be worth it for me. Um, for that reason, I am very likely to continue with my Audible membership. I generally get through all of the credits using them in, in that manner. All right, on to Scribd. So Scribd works a little bit differently. Um, you pay a monthly fee, it's about $10 a month yeah it's about ten dollars a month and you get access to their catalog of ebooks and audiobooks so with script it's actually not just audiobooks you also do get ebooks from them in my very short experience with script i didn't try their ebook service mostly because um i use my kindle to read ebooks and there's no way to get the ebooks on script onto a, an e-reading device at least not that i have found um, and I don't read on my phone or my tablet. That's just not how I like to read ebooks because I own a device for that. So within their catalog, you pretty much select audiobooks that you want and you save them and it'll show up in your saved list. And those audiobooks that are available, you can listen to right away. What I did notice is that sometimes audiobooks that I had saved would be removed and it would tell me that it was unavailable and I would have to wait in order for it to be available again. So I guess there is a limit on the number of people that can have a certain audiobook saved in their libraries. So just being aware that even though they have the audiobook, it doesn't mean that you will be able to access it right away. You may have to wait. I think the script was actually pretty nice in, in terms of the catalog of books that they had. As long as you are not looking for new releases, they have a lot of the more popular older books available in their catalog. So books that I'm able to basically get from my public library physically, I could find a lot of the audiobooks available right away on Scribd. So even though my library had those audiobooks, they had weights for them, whereas on Scribd I could get access to them pretty much right away and start reading. And this includes books like like um, the Chloe Brown and Danny Brown books, as well as Helen Huang's books. I know that when I was 
wanting to read them they were all available on Scribd. With that said they do have a far smaller catalog than say Audible um, but in general they're significantly cheaper than Audible and it's nice that you you don't own the audiobook but I'm okay with that because once again I don't really listen to audiobooks anyway so I like the trade-off of paying a fee and getting access to a bunch of audiobooks um, just to rent them as long as that fee is lower um, and then I can just return them when I'm done. I, I don't mind that style of membership. Now, with all that said, the, the main reason and my biggest gripe with Scribd and the reason that I will not be continuing membership with them is that the fastest speed that their audiobooks go up to is 2x speed. And I remember mentioning that in one of my videos and I know that a lot of people probably don't read or listen to audiobooks at that fast of a speed, but when I'm listening to audiobooks on Libby and on Audible, usually I have the speed, so long as I'm reading along, I have the speed at about 2.8 to 3 times speed. And so when I was using the script app and 2x was the max that I could go, I can read words in a page faster than the audiobook was going and it was insanely frustrating. Um, and it kind of defeats the whole reason why I use audiobooks, which is to help me get through books faster. So if it is going slower than I can read, it just it defeats the purpose. If I were purely listening, 2x speed is about the perfect speed for when I'm not reading along with the book. If I'm just purely listening to it, that works. Um, but I like having the flexibility to do both. I also just don't understand. Um, I feel like it can't be that difficult for them to change that one little thing because it's available on every other audiobook app that I have, including Libby, which is a free app. I don't pay for the Libby service. So it, it does, I don't understand why that isn't available on them. It doesn't seem like it would be this huge thing for them to do. I think that if that one aspect were fixed, I would actually um, continue with Scribd. So if they were able to fix that, I would probably continue with them at least for um, a few months at a time. I don't know if I would keep it a constant uh, yearly membership, but if there were like a set of books that I got from my library and they have them, I would sign up for a month and then get through those books and then, you know, discontinue use if I get done with that. All right, so my final conclusion, my final thoughts on Audible and Scribd. Again, I think they're, they are both uh, useful just in a very different ways and they do serve two different services and probably two different audiences as well so I use audible it's fantastic for new releases or for obscure books where the audiobook isn't readily available from a public library for example and this use is usually the case with uh, non-fiction books and certain non-popular fiction books where the library just doesn't feel the need to invest in audiobooks for for those books and then Scribd is super useful for easy and quick access to a wide library of audiobooks that aren't um, particularly new but they're probably older popular releases and you don't have to wait for it to become available from your library um, it is very likely that if Scribd has it your public library also probably has it but it takes away the wait time although it might still be there just a little bit overall though I do think that they are both good value for the um, needs that they fulfill and the needs that they serve. And so at the end of the day, for me, I, I do still have Audible and Scribd is something that I would continue with if they just fix that one issue that I have. Let me know if you guys have tried out either of these audiobook services um, and what your favorite audiobook app is. For me, it is in fact the, the Libby app. In the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.